UMBC Retrievers were crowned champions, totaling a record. UMBC, the 2019 American East Conference champions. The first ever number 16 seed to defeat a number one seed in an NCAA match. Kasai with the chip, and look at Halk with the run, and he just gets a foot on it. So long, it's incredible that the retrievers have been able to even. Welcome into another edition of the Retriever Report. Today we'll talk women's basketball with women's head basketball coach Janetta Hayes and uh, women's basketball forward Jen Gass will be with us as well. We start the program today. We talk women's volleyball. Carmen Freeman joins us from the women's volleyball team. Carmen, welcome into the program. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start on the court. Um, you were most, uh, or you were the most decorated athlete of all sports at UMBC in the fall. Um, some remarkable statistics: 274 kills for the volleyball team, 3.19 points per set. Talk about your performance on the court this year, how you felt you did, and, and just the overall season in general. Yeah, well, uh, this season I thought that I brought a little bit more consistency to the court, uh, seeing as I'm a junior this year, I've had a little bit of time to adjust to the college gameplay. Mm -hmm. So I thought I was able to really ring in the game this year and figure out how to um, play more consistently. Consistently, I didn't always have to have like an all-star game in order to feel good. I felt good as long as I was just helping my team out in any way. You know, I talked with Taylor Dunn about this, about chemistry, and you know, I got her side of, of being the setter, yeah. but I can get your side too of, you know, helping them understand where you like the ball, you know, what you like as far as going and, and being able to kill. Talk about that chemistry that, it, I guess it takes time to build that up, right? Yeah, it, it definitely does. It's always, um, difficult when you have new setters but you learn to adjust because you have to hit off of them so much um, you never want to go too far and tell them every ball like a little tighter a little bit off the yeah. net a little further out but you know you wait a couple balls and you let them know and they can usually provide that feedback in their next set and it works out pretty well talk about the team overall and some ups some, some great moments some some tough moments as well but overall it seemed like you guys had a great camaraderie both yeah. on the court and off the court as well yeah, we had a great team chemistry this year. We all got along on and off the court, as you said. Um, it was really easy because it's such a great group of people. We all love each other, and we're so good at supporting each other on the court. Whenever something goes wrong, it's not how we wanted it to go. We're still right there for each other. Like, I can feel people, I can feel people picking me up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk um, off the court. First of all, let's start with kind of your route here to UMBC. You started here uh, in Howard County, and then you moved away for a couple years to Tennessee, and, then, and now back. Mm -hmm. Did you always know it was going to be UMBC, or were there, was there some doubt, and, and was it a, a decision that was a tough decision to make? Well, no, because I wanted to be far from home. <laughs> and so when my loophole came in and I moved to Memphis in the middle of high school, I ended up being far from home in my original home. So it's actually pretty nice because I get to be away, um, but my parents still come up and visit me all the time. They're able to come to the games because they know people, they can stay up here. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't, but I'm glad I got to <laughs> be up around this area. You know, I always ask athletes about uh, what brought you to the university um, on the court, but for you, I think off the court, I think there's a lot, and talk to me about all the things that UMBC offers um, academically that really interested you in, in coming to this university. Right. So um, UMBC is known as a big STEM school, mm -hmm. uh, but I am a political science major and an American studies minor and an Arabic minor. Um, and because of political science, I wanted to be around the D.C. area because there's just so many opportunities sure. around where we are. And so that brought me in, but knowing it's still a great academic school, no matter whether you're doing STEM or you're doing social sciences or anything else, I could still you know, have a great education. That is an ambitious major and secondary majors. Mm -hmm. Man, tell, tell, the, tell people about the, the course load and what you have to deal with academically uh, here at UMBC. Right, so I um, was lucky enough to have brought in some credits go, um, from high school, but uh, because I'm doing three different uh, tracks, 
I'm pretty much don't have I don't have very much leeway <laughs> to move outside of those three things. So I'm every semester I'm taking Arabic, American Studies, and Political Science, and then nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, Arabic's pretty heavy because I don't speak Arabic as a first language. It was just something that I was interested in doing. So it, it can be difficult, but honestly, I'm very happy about what I've chosen to do. All right, let's start with your major. What, what got you interested in politics mm -hmm. and wanted you really to become a, a political science major? Right, so my parents are very politically involved, not straight through like the government, but my dad um, was a pastor and that can be uh, very politically involved with the congregation. Um, and he always has been. They took me to NAACP meetings when I was a kid. And my mother, she's worked with nonprofits in D.C. before, so she's kind of dealt with the politics of D.C. Um, I've just always wanted to make a lot of change and do big things. I'm aspiring for presidency. Nice, <laughs> nice. And I guess the Arabic and economics kind of secondary majors are, are, are tied into politics as well to where you could expand what you want to do, um, not just here in, in the United States, but, you know, overseas as well. Yeah. Yeah. My sister actually did Arabic when she was in school and then she uh, went to Egypt to finish learning her um, her language. So that kind of encouraged me to get into get into it when I was in high school. And then I just carried it over into college. And that's pretty cool. Family, your sister played volleyball as well. Yeah. Um, you know, talk about your interest in the sport obviously with her and, and just how you got started and, and what made you want to be a volleyball player. Yeah, I saw her. Um, <laughs> she's going to love that I attributed this to her. <laughs> but I saw her when I was younger. She always played. She um, ended up playing at Florida A&M University mm -hmm. as also an outside, even though I'm better than her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that um, was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, watching her play really made me want to play. When I, you know, started playing, I – wanted to do big. My mom tried to trick me into doing regional teams when I wanted to be on like the big elite travel teams. Um, and somehow she let me do the travel teams, which I'm really thankful for because it got me here. So uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> I will attribute that to my sister Camille. Awesome. Awesome. What about some of, tell me about some of your experiences that you've enjoyed most here at UMBC and kind of some of the things you loved. Yeah, so um, I'm a part of SAC, which is the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and I really appreciate being able to uh, be one of the co-presidents with uh, women's basketball uh, team captain Tyler Moore, mm -hmm. and we're able to really talk about how we can affect change within the athletics community, um, not just at UMBC, not just in our conference America East, but also in the NCAA. Um, and we get to know a lot of student athletes, so I think that's such a great opportunity to be able to grow personal connections with people in the same community and that's definitely something that I've prized a lot while being here. As somebody who wants to be a leader mm -hmm. and really wants to embrace these things, how difficult is it to get other people involved and really get everybody on board? How much of a challenge is that in, in your generation? Oh yeah, it can be difficult sometimes. Um, me and Ty kind of have an interesting dynamic. I'm definitely bad cop. I really like calling people out and be like, no, you, you have to come. Um, but I, I kind of find joy in it. Like that's a fun part because then I get to talk to people more and tell them about what's happening. And so that's more exposure for whatever we're doing. So as difficult as it can be to get young heads into um, an event or something of the sorts, I enjoy it. Awesome. Um, I know you talked about the student uh, st committee. You know, I know you guys are, you started a new thing with mental illness, and I know that's a big thing, and you guys have really done a, a lot of great things as far as, as what's going on around university. Yeah, uh, we're trying to make sure that athletes can get in the right headspace. We deal with so much, we have such tight schedules, that sometimes we don't have enough, we don't think we have enough time to think, uh, but we do. We definitely, we definitely just need to learn how to do it because we're not always taught how to get in that position, and I think our initiatives are helping to help people with that. Awesome. Carmen, thanks for, for spending a few minutes with of us. Course. We really appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck with the whole thing with President. We'll, maybe <laughs> we'll see you out there someday. I'll be able to say, hey, I interviewed her when she was in college. <laughs> um, appreciate the time, and good luck uh, next year as well on the volleyball. Of course. Thank you. You got it. Carmen Freeman here with us. Coming back after the break, we'll talk women's basketball. Janetta Hayes and Jen Gass join us here on the Retriever Report.
my anxiety kind of like spiked through the roof and I started having like depressive symptoms and it got to the point where I couldn't fo like couldn't function anymore. We've been really privileged to have some courageous student athletes but also invested administrators and coaches. It's okay to, to be sad. It's okay, it's okay to have anxiety. You know, there's nothing more important than the health and safety of our student athletes. And I, I think the, the mental health initiative is one that we're going to continue to build on and you know, make a difference in all of our student athletes' lives across the league. Welcome back to the Retriever Report. Let's talk women's college basketball here at UMBC as women's head coach Janetta Hayes is with us along with Jen Gast. And coach, I know you guys are battling through a tough road trip right now, trying to trying to find some wins, uh, but there's some bright spots, including Jen, who we'll get to in a second. But Teja Oliver right now is just on fire for you guys, averaging 20 points a game. Talk about what Teja has brought to the table and just how well she's played in the first eight games of the season. I think Teja has definitely stepped her level up, game up. Last year she was a leading scorer with maybe 11 points, 12 points a game. But um, the demand for her to score the ball for us is really important and have the attempts. She's playing with a different intensity and tempo on both ends of the floor. So she's definitely been a plus for us. You've really taken the reins off of her and said, hey, Go, go score. Don't worry. You miss a shot. Don't worry about it. Just keep, and I guess that's a shooter's confidence, right? You can't think about the shot you missed. You just got to keep shooting, right? Right. I think Saturday's game, which is her birthday, she shot maybe 5 for 24. So I told her, I said, hey, tomorrow you'll be better. It can't get any worse than this, right? But no, the shots that she took were very good shots. It was high volume shots, um, off the bounce, good looks for her. She practiced those shots every day. Tay just put more time into her game than she probably ever have now. And so... Um, for her confidence as well, I want to keep shooting it. You know, Lyric has to kind of pick it up as well, as well as Paula. But I don't want to just have Tasia taking those shots, but I think Lyric and Paula can find those shots in the offense as well. When you were here last month, Jen was a big topic, how well she's played so far this year. Talk about Jen's evolution and kind of what she's meant to the team. Jen has definitely stepped up a ton. You know, um, I'm not sure if she expected that, but I think now that she's kind of following the same role, it's an expectation for her as well as our team. They're depending on her to be in certain spots at certain times. So her name is called on a lot now. Um, she's part of the big three. Um, I think her, Paula, and Tasia are our big three if we have any, and she's done a pretty good job. I know in the stands, I can hear Coach TJ wife the entire time screaming at Jen, like, Jen, you got it, get another rebound. So she has the confidence behind her now, whether things are going good or bad, to stay very consistent. We talked about you know taking over a program and kind of evaluating you know the players that you have. What did you see in Jen that you loved, and kind of where did Jen – blossom to you was it in the offseason workouts or or where was it where you thought she could really be a contributor to you guys I think in preseason one day she was running and I like ripped her a new one about something like not going hard or giving her very best and after that it was almost like I challenged her mm -hmm. and when I challenged her she actually responded well very positive and since then it's always positive eye contact yes you know ask questions um, some of it wasn't me. I think it's her wanting to grow and have a bigger responsibility with the retrievers. Like, she has made it her business. Like, this is my job. And she's walked herself into a starting position now. And, Jen, that's a good transition because I'm guessing that with your dad being a pitcher in the Orioles organization, a, a big sports guy, he's, you've probably gotten that your whole life, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that. Talk about, you know, the, the you know, being an athlete uh, in, a, in a sports household and, and kind of getting that tutoring. Um, I think it really just starts with like him always telling us when we were younger, him, my father and my mother, telling us that, like no matter what, just give it your all on the court and like if things aren't going right, like you can always change that. Like it's within, within yourself to change it. And like Coach Hayes said, when she challenged us in the beginning of the season and myself, like I wasn't going to quit. So I knew that I just had to step up and just be the best I could for my team and for myself. 
how crazy has the two years been? Yeah. When you come here, you come here from across the street. You yeah. know, we talked to Carmen earlier, and she wanted to get away from home as far as she could. <laughs> Jen's walking across the street here from, from Gainesville High School. So, yes. um, But then it, it all changed once you got here because of the coaching change and everything was kind of up in the air last year. Um, how crazy has this two years been? Um, the past two years have been pretty crazy. Um, but I think the new coaching staff and change was definitely needed, and I think we have the best fit. I think that they give us a lot more confidence than our old coaches give us. And at practice, like, it's always like, if we miss a layup, like, you need to put it back. It's not just you missed it, oh, you'll get it next time. It's like, you get it, go back up with it. And I think that they, like, just teach us to be, like, the best we can. And these past two years have been, like, a roller coaster, but I think we're doing pretty well right now. And I think I see things, like, getting better for us. After last year, with the change, did you approach that as, oh, this is a new opportunity for me? and really a chance to show what I can do, and did you embrace that? I did. Uh, last year I was injured most of the games. Um, I didn't really play like at all, but once we knew we were getting a new coaching staff, I knew all I could do was just try to get as healthy as I could, and when the new coaching staff came in, just try to be in the gym as much as I could and just keep getting better every day. <laughs> Coach, I, I, I hope you don't get mad at me for this, but I wanted, you, I wanted to ask you too, because we were talking – before we started, and you were talking about your mom and dad and kind of what they did to you in the backyard, shooting free throws and things like that. So, right. you know, it's, it's something that's ingrained in everybody, right? Right. I, I think, you know, it's really important that we do have structure and you, you do know the expectations. My mom's expectation, you know, coaching me was you cannot be the worst free throw shooter on the team. I am the coach. So I would go home, she'd throw the ball out and be like, good luck, figure it out, you know. So I do think that's my approach sometimes with them a little bit. You know, do it again. Why'd you do that? You know, I ask a lot of questions and they're probably wondering, like, why is she asking this right now? Because I really want to know what they're thinking so I'll know where to meet them at. We have, you know, for me, 11 new players. So I'm trying to figure out every personality, what gets them to tick, what doesn't. So sometimes I'll sit, my coaches are coaching, but I'm just trying to figure out where they are. So to know in a game situation where, they're be, where they are and where I can meet them at so we can get as much as we can to secure a win. Again, like, Jen hasn't been difficult to work with, but shes it's been great to see her grow so fast. And I think the positive sides of her are the limits. Or there's no cap on it right now. As much as she wants is there, and we're going to give her as much as she will allow us to this season. Jen, I want to ask about you personally. What was it like growing up? Your dad was a pitcher in the Orioles organization. Um, you know, you, you huge Oriole fan. Uh, what was that like? You pitched the Coward Hall in high school. Did, what was yes. it like growing up in, in that house? Um... It was competitive. My sister also played soccer at Towson. She mm -hmm. just graduated. Um, my mom was a cheerleader, so everyone just has like a competitive edge to themselves. Like my sister is always asking me nowadays, Jen, like, are you free? I'm like, yeah. She's like, can I come up and play you one on one? I'm like, I have homework. Like she's always just trying to like compete <laughs> with me, and like I just think that like makes me like a well-rounded person because I know like can see when things go wrong and see when things go well and just know how to fix it and balance it out. Can, can we talk about the Orioles? I know it's, yeah. you know, for fans of Baltimore, it's been a roller coaster ride. Yeah. 2012, 2014 playoffs, but now the Dylan Bundy traded yes, uh, yesterday. So how are, you, how are you holding up as an Oriole fan right now? You know, last season wasn't the best, but, I mean, everyone was saying this is like their growth year, and I think that kind of is like us too. Like last year we didn't have the best year, and this year is like our growth year, and I see us growing, and, I'm hoping the Orioles will do to, will do that too. <laughs> what do you What do you like most about the team, uh, the UMBC, about the the team in general? What What stands out to you? I like how like different each one of us are, but when we all come together, like we know how to be as one. Like we do have days where we're not on the same page, but like when we're off the court, like we forget about the like the things that went bad, and we talk about it, but like we don't have it like dwell on us to affect our like everyday life and. We hang out with each other a lot off the court, and I think we're just like, we're really close and everything in the past two years that we've been through with the coaching change and everything, I think that really brought us together as a group and made each one of us stronger. Coach Hayes coming up, Syracuse, tough matchup again on the road. Talk about the, the orange and kind of what, what, uh, what the, what the uh, battle is up there. This is a really athletic group, so we're going to have to do a good job boxing out, securing the ball, um, playing our pace basketball right now. Um, they're not running a ton of sets, they're just getting out and beating people in transition and dominating on the board. So we're going to try to limit their offensive touches on offensive rebounds and definitely try to work on our turnovers. As I shared with the team, it's really not about Syracuse at this point. We're just working on us. 
every game we're working on us so we can, we're growing in the right direction. I think we took a step back the other day. We had a moment, but LaSalle game played well. We got into Kennesaw State, played well in the first half, had a drought in the second half, and it affected the win and loss column. So going into Syracuse, same thing. We want to take the same approach every game, but the emphasis is definitely going to be to box out every time. So I need Jen Dad on board to be calling the entire team and saying, box out, ladies. You know, that's something that we definitely want to stress our young ladies to box out and then take care of the ball. All right, well, let's wrap up with the most important topic of the day. It's a big weekend for UMBC. Men play Morgan State on Saturday. It's down to the final four as far as which SpongeBob episode is going to air during halftime. And I've just heard that <laughs> on Sunday, I know you guys are anxious to be home against Morgan on Sunday. You're picking the SpongeBob episode oh, yeah. that airs at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited about that. I guess I should talk to the players about, really my player, my children about it. Um, we watch SpongeBob probably every morning at like 5 a.m. So I have some some good selections and hopefully the the ones that air we can choose the okay. one I think is best fit for sure. Outstanding, Coach. Excited. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you for having Jen, us. Thanks so Thank much you. for stopping by and, and talking to us. Good luck, ladies, for the rest of the season. Thank you so for, much for basketball. Thank you. Going to do it for the Retriever Report. I'm Paul Mittermeier saying so long. See you. See you next time.